your attention, please. Hello, faith family and friends. Now it's time for Agape Church announcements. So let's find out what's up. Hey there, Agape family, faith friends, and special guests. The month of March is here. And it's time for March Madness. Madness. Let's go crazy for Christ and invite, invite, invite someone to be your guest right here at Agape. All together now, let's grow your rope. For the entire month of March, challenge yourself to grow your rope. And all together, we will know, show, and grow in Christ's love in one house. Love family. We can evangelize together because each one can reach one. Grab your invitations today and go out to bring them in. This month, Dr. V is doing a three-part series you don't want to miss out on. That's right, you see the title. It's going to be a fire word. Do you want to make sure that you're fireproof? Then join us for the next three weeks straight to hear and receive a life changing word. Is it going to be the curse word and sound like the world? Is it going to be, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. What, I mean, what are we going to say, right? The Lord loves me. Christ is my firm foundation. What are we going to say when the squeeze is on because the world is watching? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We'll see you on Sundays. Agape Church, March 15th is our beloved Pastor Yvonne's birthday. Blessed is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Let's all together make this year special for her. Faith family, if you desire to give a special love gift to Pastor Yvonne, you can do so via Cash App at hashtag Lady Yvonne 5. To God be all the glory for another given year. Happy birthday, Pastor Yvonne. Sunday, March 24th is a special day for two special occasions and will be held in a special location. That's right, it's Palm Sunday and Baptism Day. Faith family, mark your calendars and save the date and join Agape Church at the Holiday Inn Express Ballroom in Aberdeen. We will be gathering together to lift our palms in praise to the King of Glory, Christ Jesus. And directly after service, we will be witnessing and celebrating our brothers and sisters in Christ who will be participating in water baptism. If you desire to demonstrate your life dedication to Jesus Christ through water baptism, grab a blue card today at our connection table, or you can call the church phone at 443-640-7491. Sign up to be a witness for Jesus Christ, deciding that you are all in. So save the date, March 24th, for our special double Palm Sunday and Baptism Day. We hope to see you all there. March 31st is Resurrection Sunday. Faith family, Jesus is alive and this great news is something for us to come out and celebrate together. On that special day, At Kids Church will have their Easter lesson and activities with Minister Tati in Room 4 during the Sunday morning message. At Kids ages are 5 through 12 years old and they are loved and welcomed. 
So let's give God our yes and put on our best dress clothes and give Jesus the seat of honor in our life for the finished work he did on the cross for you and me. Come and see, come and be with your God, your Savior, and your faith family to hear a life-saving word about the cross on Calvary. Service begins at 1111 a.m. at 351 Lewis Lane, Have the Grace Maryland. We hope to see you there. Bad company corrupts good morals, yet you're still hanging around the friends that are leading you in sin. The Bible says if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Some of you need to cut off some friends this year. There's a picture of a rotten fruit right next to a perfectly good fruit. What happens? The mold from the rotten fruit spreads to the good fruit and both end up rotten. Surround yourself with negative people and you'll soon become negative too. Surround yourself with gossipers and you'll soon become a gossip too. The devil will strategically place certain people in your life so that you don't advance and stay stuck in certain sins. These people may believe in Jesus, but the Bible says even the demons believe and tremble, yet your friends have no problem sinning and dragging you right into it. There's a great quote, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. So pick your friends wisely so that your future can be bright. It's better to have one good friend leading you closer to Christ than ten leading you straight to hell. Now it's time for our Sunday morning message. Who's ready for the word? Someone say yeah. Grab your Bibles and your notebooks and let's get ready to receive a life-changing word. Come on, let's eat. Let's eat, 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 eat. eat. Go with me and your Bibles. Also here, we also have a QR code, so if you want the slides, you can follow along that way. I know we have a whole bunch of techies in there like me and likes this version. This way you can recap throughout the week and eat and reheat and eat again the Word of God. But we are kicking off a new series. Go ahead. We make sure we cleared all the kids out of here so we can say it and say it loud like a trumpet. Say, hell no. Hell no. Uh-oh. Somebody got some reserve, reserve pastor. Everybody. There's a few reserves. Don't worry about it. We're going to get you loosened up before it's over, right? So I'm coming out of Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 today. Matthew 16 and 18 in your Bibles. Please go there with me. You'll have one more chance to get that QR code. But Matthew 16 and 18 in your Bibles. And your word, my word, our word, the Holy Word of God says. And it's written in red. So Jesus said it, y'all. So let's really dive in. It says, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, say this rock, this rock. I will build my church. Come on, Jesus. The very first time Jesus mentions the church in the entire Bible. And the gates of hell, this is where we jump off at, shall not prevail against it. Come on, somebody real quick, say it with me one more time. Say, hell no. Hell no. Okay, all right, still a little bit reserved. Y'all like, am I supposed to say it? It's in the Bible. It's all right. If the preacher's saying it, you can say it too. Y'all not going to go to hell for saying hell no. Matter of fact, we're going to go the opposite way because we're saying hell no. So one more time, just stretch out. <laughs> and say it with your chest because, you know, I know my mother's over here. Y'all like, Pastor Vincent, your mother's in here. And I know she's in here. Once again, say hell no. Say hell no. All right, exactly, because I guarantee you she would tell you the same thing, all right, as a woman of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, God, we're so very excited and delighted to be in this house for this momentum and for this moment, oh Lord, that we would not miss the movement of your Holy Spirit. So we, your sons and daughters, are gathered and assembled to this place, oh Father God, as one house in your house, oh Lord. So we look to you now as the host of heaven to speak into our hearts, our hearing, and our head. Dear Lord, and help us to be able to declare with confidence and confidence, hell no. And it's in Jesus' matchless and mighty name we pray. And the people of God say amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. High five and neighbor on the way down. Tell them love like him. Love like him. And you may now all have your seats in the presence of our life changing king. Thank you for standing and reading and participating in the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Amen. What a celebration Sunday has been. I'm talking about what a time it has been. Pastor Brown, I don't know if I'm staying in the jacket the whole time. I can feel the flame already turning on. That's all right. We're going to be all right. Well, I might have a stain. That don't matter. That's anointing under there. All right. So here we are kicking off a new series. It's a three-parter. So if you miss a piece, you're really going to miss it because we only got a couple weeks. Ella, can we get those lights off? It's messing with my new goggle things that got on my face here. Y'all, who's my glasses? People, y'all know what we're going through right now, right? I'm new to the team. Right? Am I, am I, am I wearing it right? Okay. Yep. Yeah, what's up? All right. So, 
Uh, we we want to make sure that we dive into this thing, and you don't want to miss a part. You don't want to miss a piece. As a matter of fact, here on your flyer, it tells all the great things we have going on. This is our Super Bowl season, everybody. Yeah. This is the Super Bowl season of the Christian. If there was ever a time, Lamar, to invite somebody to church, it's this month. All right. It's this month. It's one of those weird years. It's a leap year, y'all. Right? Okay. Right. Don't 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 take it out on leap year, right? But here it is. We're in March, and this particular year. Uh, Resurrection Sunday, a.k.a. the world calls it Easter, it falls in March. A lot of times some of us are used to April and we're like, why is Easter here so early? Because it is, all right? Take it up with the calendar, take it up with the Lord. But the fact of the matter is we got a jam-packed action month where we got a three-part series, we got Palm Sunday, we got Holy Week, we got Resurrection Sunday, we got Baptism. You do not want to miss it. It's all on the flyer. It's all doing the work for you. All you got to do is say, you're invited by. Put your name on the box and hand it out to somebody. I challenge you right now, three. Grab three flyers off the seats, off the connection table, whatever the case may be. Even if you need it, we can send it to you digitally if you want to really send it to somebody across a text message or email or whatever way you want it. But the fact of the matter is I'm challenging you. Somebody say challenge. 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 Y'all see what we do? We incentivize you. We give a belt. We do a party. Everything. I run around with my head cut off. I'm like, yeah, you're the champion. Listen, the people who invite the most people for next month, I'm telling you, it's going to be big. Pastor Ron's going to be big. It's going to be big. Real big, Huge. right? Gift card is going to need a two-man lift. That's how big it's going to be. I'm challenging right now at least three people invite you to church because the reality is this. How much do you have to dislike somebody to keep them from going to hell? Wow. And that invite to church can be the difference maker. Amen? Amen. I got any difference makers in here? I know I got two groups, two broke groups that are talking about being a difference maker. Amen? Amen. All right, so that's my announcement. I'm settle into the pocket. Let's figure this out. Matter of fact, let's, let's jump into this. There's a farmer on his farm, everybody. And he's walking upon, he's walking and he happens upon a snake one day. And he looks over and he sees that the snake is standing up and he's moving side to side and he's got this mouse in his sight, this field mouse in his sight. But the farmer is walking along and he's working his fields and he's got a shovel in his hand. So as he sees that the snake is getting ready to make his move on this mouse and he's got him hypnotized, he's got him locked in, everybody. He's moving, he's doing his little snake skin dance thing. Y'all know what it is, ladies, right? Y'all have seen that dude in the club doing his little snake skin. Anyway, right? So now the mouse is just dazzled. He does, he's locked in. He doesn't know how to break this gaze and this stare with the with this predator that's getting ready to eat him. But here comes the farmer, y'all. And he takes the shovel head and he sticks it down between the two of them. It breaks the gaze. The mouse runs off. And before the, uh, the snake can even figure out what happens, the farmer chops off his head. Wow. What am I saying about this story today? The word of God. The word. God is the farmer. His word is that shovel head. And today he wants us to chop off the head of the enemy. He wants us to break the gaze and the hypnosis that the enemy has over us by being able to jump into a series, to be able to understand what he's saying in his word about hell no. Somebody say hell no. Hell no. And so today we kick off a short series that will lead us into Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and Resurrection Sunday called Hell No. And here's the baseline. Yes, this is a series that's meant to be sensational. Obviously, right? Hence the title. Okay, I know y'all are going to have some problems. Try. Y'all, man, you got to come to church and check out my pastor. He's teaching a series on... Um, H W E hockey stick. Stop. <laughs> Just say it. Right? Say it with boldness and say it with confidence. He's telling us how not to go to hell. Right? If you look at it, how it's set up grammatically, hell, comma, no. No is an entire sentence. Matter of fact, no is an exclamation. Hell is a pro is a noun. It's a person, place, or thing. Meaning that I am saying hell, I don't want to go. Break it down. Anybody really want to go there? No. I didn't think so, right? Because the reality is this, just like Pastor Ron said in that awesome announcement, let's come become fireproof. Because the reality is this, when somebody's finally got to that place of brokenness in their life, they run up in here anyway because their life is on fire. They're looking for life insurance. They're looking for fire insurance. Right? What, what did the old saints say? You headed to hell. You headed to hell with gasoline drawers on, young man. You better clean up your act. Burn, baby. Burn. Right? <laughs> And by knowing about a thing, because see, that's the thing. Here in the world, it doesn't matter whether we're talking biblical. Everything should be biblical as opposed to political or any other way, socially or whatever way. But the reality is we suffer. God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge, Pop, because you don't know a thing is why you're suffering from a thing. You're fearful of hell, surely, right? You're scared. Let's just be what it is. But you're not reverentially fearful of it. Because you don't know the difference. And so God says, break this thing down. Because Vincent, until they understand why I created it, who it was created for, and how they can stay out of it, then they won't understand the reason and rhyme why they don't need to have sin in their life. 
I'm setting a whole dinner table for you in three short series you do not want to miss a part. And yes, it's meant to shake us away from the sleep that the enemy is working to draw over us as a church. Despite the Bible's clear teaching of both heaven and hell, it is not unusual for people to believe in the reality of heaven while rejecting the reality of hell. Wow. In part, this is due to wishful thinking. And we as Christians, we, can't, we should not be wishing, right? Over in the army, each other will, will not agree. We say, wish in one hand and do something in the other and see which one fills up first. Right? I keep the colorful part out. But the reality is this, right? You can't walk around talking about, I wish, I wish. No, we're people of hope. Say, I'm of hope. I'm of hope. Oh. I'm of hope. And if you got a hole in your hope, then we understand why you wish it. Mm -hmm. Wow. You got to get the hole out your hope. It's easier to accept the idea of a nice afterlife, but damnation isn't quite so appealing and easy to accept. Now, is it? Right? We don't want to roll the dice with that thing. We don't want to acknowledge that that thing is real. We would like to stay in that place where the world says ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. wow. If I don't know about it, then it ain't going to happen. Boo -boo. <laughs> that ain't true. You know that. You know that's not the truth, right? You've got to know, and, and God wants us to know that we know that that's not the case. This is the same mistake human beings often make when it comes to substance abuse, dangerous behaviors, and so forth. Because we're out here just philandering it and flopping around in God's permissive will. Wow. Well, why didn't God stop me from doing this? Because you don't want him to stop you from doing anything else. You want to go spin how you want to spin. You want to go live how you want to live. You want to do how you want to do, come and go how you want to come and go, right? Matter of fact, you even start telling your mom and dad that well before it's your time of your exit. And so if you do that to your earthly parents, then surely you'll do it to your heavenly father. Right. And so here we are, we have a problem with why God won't keep us out of the fire. Wow. We can't act like that. That's not being mature. As a matter of fact, that's being very much so like a child. God says it's time to grow up. Look at your neighbor, smile real big, and help me out and say, grow up. Grow up. Grow up. If you say it, maybe they won't be so offended. If you say, you say grow up. Right? If, you, if you say it, the pastor didn't say it. Right? You say grow up, and the pastor said it. I still blame you. Man. You got to live with him. I don't. Anyway, so this, this assumption, which, by the way, I was taught the assumption is the lowest form of human intelligence. When you walk around assuming, I love it. Next time your spouse fires off into you in a fight, to my well, I assume, stop. Pastor said, that's low intelligence right there. Don't take that back. <laughs> take that back. Right? But it's the lowest form of human assumption that we will get what we want and it overrides the unpleasantness, but the rational view that things might end, not end well. Hmm. That's what happens with our permissive will. We get out there and we just do what we want to do, thinking about the front end, but not thinking about the outcome of a situation. That's not rational. That's not realistic, family. That's not being a grown-up or a Christian, right? We're thinking God is a genie in a bottle and not the creator of the universe. Come on. Wow. Stop treating him like that. That's right. Come on. Somebody say, hell no. Hell no. This is why this series is needed, so let's jump into it. When Jesus promised to build his church, he said again in Matthew 16 and 18 that the gates of Hades or hell will not overcome it. What an interesting contrast to immediately make after the very first mention of the Bible by Jesus. He went right from Peter, this upon the rock. Now, that's a whole nother message in a whole nother series. And I know all y'all deep theologians want to talk about what's the rock. Is the rock Peter? Is the rock the revelation? Is the revelation that the rock said? How about that, right? <laughs> Peter the rock spoke out a boulder of a revelation, which is by faith, through grace, we will receive salvation. And Jesus says, with that, guess what? I'm going to build right on top of that. That's what that means. So now we go after the comma where we pick up at 18. And what he's talking about is this. Hell immediately after that. And again, we're not going to hear about hell being taught to us by anybody else. Now, you would think Paul, who's the gospel globetrotter who, who wrote more than half of the New Testament, he's going to tell us and help us understand more about hell. No, not, not necessarily. Uh, he's going to help us learn about sin. But Jesus himself spoke the most about hell in the Bible. Jesus talked? Yes. Jesus covered all kinds of stuff that we don't want to know about. He talked about divorce. He talked about uh, sin. He talked about hell. He talked about your money. He talked about all those things. He didn't just come and talk about Disney World. No. He came to get you delivered. He came to get your mind adjusted. Amen? Yes. And what an interesting contrast that he would immediately make, right? An understanding of the biblical implications of a gate helps us to interpret what Jesus is saying. Essentially, family, a gate is where rulers met and counsel was given out. Yes. So what he's saying here in Matthew 16 and 18, that all the evil plans of Satan himself would never defeat the church. Amen. All the negative evil plans that that wicked counselor, that ruler of this earth has in store for your life, it will not prosper. My God. Matter of fact, help me spread that gospel with your neighbor. Look at him and say, it will not prosper. It will not prosper. Though the weapon may be formed, it shall not prosper in your life. 
Now, listen, I'm not giving back no money to give back guarantees to say it won't get formed now. Oh, he's got he's forming something for you. He's, he's trying to bring the scum in your life. But if you know better, you'll do better. Yes. If you know better, you'll be able to ward him off and keep him at arm's bay in your life. Y'all really want to know how to fight the good fight of faith. This is how we do it in your word. This is how we do it, amen? So since a gate is a place where rulers man counsel, all the evil plans of the Satan himself would never defeat. Let me give you another version of our opening text. It says in the New Living Translation, Now I say to you that you are here, that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Meaning that if you're the church, say I'm the church. I'm the church. That's right, we're one house. Reaching the world with the gospel, it's all about him. We are one house. Shout out one house. One house. And if we're one house, God's church, then hell cannot prosper and prevail in your life. That's right. Wow. But if you got hell in your life, then one would have to ask, are you a part of the church? Right. Wow, sir. Should have brought him under. Look well, for it. Look for it. Look okay. for it. Hey. I'm sitting in the church. I wonder should I be a member of this church? I'll leave that to you. Okay, so it goes on. We all fear the thing that we don't know about. So today, let's become learned about it and move from common fear to reverential fear, like I mentioned earlier, and learn why we don't want to go to hell. Jesus talked frequently about hell. In fact, we learn more about it than anybody else. Why? Because he does not want us to be ignorant about it. That's right. He doesn't want us to be ignorant about it. Come on, somebody shout out, hell no. Hell no. Hell no. So let me kick over this message with a series, uh, in a series quickly about a history of Satan, because a lot of times we don't even know where he came from. We just think he materialized. No, this dude's got a saga of his own. Yeah. Y'all like, no, you know, he was he good first and then he turned back? There's more drama in here than there is on your television. That's right. But do you know how to get it out? Come on. This is better than any reality series, any wife, any game show on television. I know y'all watching that new deal and no deal with the sexy dude with his chest out. Listen, this is better than that. This, okay, let me give you all a history about Satan. Let me help you all understand how he got that here. Satan was once known as the morning star. Yes, he was. Right? Do y'all know what the morning star is? It's the sun. When Bob, we call him Bob in the military, bright orange ball. When Bob rises up in the morning and brings out the warmth, he's the bright morning star, right? So he was known as the morning star. But when the Latin got translated, bright morning star is known as Lucifer. Say Lucifer. Lucifer. That's right. That used to be his name, right? The Lucifer. That's what it's, it's, it's translated as. Notice I'm using a lowercase uh, for his name, by the way. Why? Because I'm being disrespectful to that little book. He don't even get capitalized. I ain't putting no speck on his name, Pop, because he don't deserve it. Why? Because he's under my feet. Okay. Y'all get it later, right? Right? Wondering why you just feel like you're getting beat. Like Mike Tyson is whooping on you in the spirit because you ain't got that same level of confidence. You don't know his true position in your life, which is under your feet. So his Latin, translated as Lucifer, was being cre uh, was uh, he was a being created by God. He was a cherubim angel. Now don't fall for the European version. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, cherubim angels aren't these little fat little babies with curly hairs with little wings floating around. Come on. That's that's not real. That's not real at all. You would think that angels showing would look a little tougher than that, right? Think Gabriel. Think Michael. Think think Jeff Miller with. Wings on. <laughs> That's an angel, right? Think, think Jeff on this side, Lamar on this side, and Jesus in the middle. That's what an angel look like. Okay, that's what an angel look like. When I get there, I think they even gonna have some ink. They gonna have a whole tattoo parlor down on Peter Boulevard. Let me. Cause I'm, that, okay, all right. Let me move on, right? Let me tell you what he even says out over in Isaiah 37 and 16. He says, "Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, and thrown between two cherubims." So he's not just any old kind of common angel. He's a special angel, right? That, that the God of the universe sits between, Chris. And he says, you are all alone, a God, over the kingdoms of the earth that you have made heaven and earth. This is what God is trying to help us understand about who he was. That's right. So he started out as good. Look at your neighbor and say he was good. He was good. At one point. At one point. But then what happened? Satan was just a cherub, but then he was also, check this out, he was emblazoned with jewels. And was beautiful and captivating to look yes, at. Sir. This is why when you're blessed with that with that beauty gift, you got to be careful. That's right. You got to be careful. Now look, not, I ain't gonna say look at your neighbor. Look, not every, not all of us is given with that, right? My wife is always bothered. Talking about every time I go places, Vincent, we want to talk about my clothes, we want to talk about my hair, they want to know how I do my eyebrows. I was like, poor you. <laughs> Take it up with the Lord that He gave you the gift of beauty. Poor you. 
Right? My heart breaks for you, Nikita. I'm sorry that people will let you cut the line because you're curly hair. You know what I'm saying? For you. Some of us got to work a little harder out here to get a little forward in life. Right, Pop? Ain't nobody just giving me free coffee, holding on door for me. You know what I'm saying? I had to work real hard to get these teeth straight to make sure that I got something to offer in this world. I'm sorry. I just took a moment, Elder Kyle. I'm sorry. Y'all pray. You praying for me right now? Okay. So I had to come out of that jacket, right? But this is where beauty can turn into something that's bad. Yeah. Right? I learned this story from my wife, a.k.a. also from the late Reverend James Alfred Haley, because he told this story from the King James Version. When he was preaching, he was here on this side of heaven, and he used to tell the story to her as a girl. She taught it to me, and I was like, oh, this is so good. Right? But he was emblazoned with jewels. Imagine, he was, he was completely covered in jewels. He was blinged out, right? He was captivating to look at. He would draw your attention. He was cre he created music when he moved. Anybody ever hop out of bed and skip to the bathroom and is a jingle place? No, no. By the way, just in case you're wondering, how did another important thing that got him from heaven to the earth? It was not created here, but it got imported here with Satan was music. This is why you got to be careful what music you're listening to. Because he was the chief of that music. All right, so creative music when he moved. He was deemed like the sun, right? He was bright and shiny. He was shot out of heaven like a lightning bolt. This is where the story turns bad for him, everybody, and was here on earth before the lights came on. So before humanity became, began, before God piled up dust and blew in the ruach of God, the spirit of God, and said, okay, you're Adam, and then Adam lay down, I'm going to do surgery, and I'm going to bring forth Eve out of your rib. Before all of that happened, Satan was down here moving around with the lights off, waiting, waiting. Waiting for you and I, right? Seven. Placing him on here on earth with the lights off. Matter of fact, Ezekiel 28, 12 through 17. Don't worry about it. It's a lot of scripture, but I'm going to read it to y'all. Y'all ready? Go on here? Here you go, right? So now, Ezekiel is written in a text that everybody can understand. He's talking about the king of Tyre, which is a bad king. Say a bad king. Bad king. Who's, who's, who's got a, a, a beef with Israel. He wants to destroy Israel. So now, if I give it in this type of prophetic way, the people of Israel will understand it. But make no mistake, God is giving this message to this prophet to convey also who Satan was. Yes. But he's trying to use a natural man to help them to get the understanding. Amen. Apostle Terry's over here, not in north and south, which means I'm doing all right, right? So it says, the son of man, take up the lamentation for the king of Tyre. Go and lament for this poor man. Go and lament even for my fallen angel, Satan. And say unto him, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. When things go wrong. Yeah. Right? And really what we should, oh, this is so good. I hope y'all get what I'm saying, right? If things went wrong for Satan, then how can, how can it not go wrong for you? You were in Eden, the perfect place here on earth, the garden of God. Every precious stone was on your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the turquoise. He had all the bling, y'all. <laughs> all, all of it, Terry. Yes. Right? <laughs> An emerald with gold. It was all encrusted and laid in gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes were prepared for you on the day that you were created. The only version of any translation in the Bible is the King Jimmy version, KJV, which talks about how he had timbrels and pipes and organs yeah. prepared in him. Come on. In which him. means when he would move, yeah. I would play music. Woo! Dude, talk about the Pied Piper. This is where it came from, right? So it goes on in 2014. You were the anointed cherub who covers. He was the man. How can you be the man next to the man and blow it? Mm. Wow. Shucks. Right? I established you. Ooh. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in all of your ways from the day you were created till iniquity, iniquity was found in you. Dun, dun, dun. Right? Everybody's like, oh my God, that's in my Bible. It's in your Bible. Read it. Yes, sir. Right? No, good thing I'm reading it to you, right? Until iniquity was found in you. It's just like your favorite housewife until she had that moment. And then all of a sudden, things went bad. Dang, dang. Now, next week, she's the villain, right? Okay? This is happening. They stole it off in the Bible. Pop. So it goes on to 16. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within. And you sin, therefore, I cast you out as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Wow. This is how Satan got shot out of heaven. Yeah. This is how he got down here working on his plan for you and for me. It goes on to 17. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You, are, you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. My God. For your own splendor, for your own glory, for you to become an icon. Mm. Oh, you don't even know you're being indoctrinated with a language that was meant for Satan. Right. Mm. 
Oh, I, I worship you. You're my idol. You better watch what you're saying. Yeah, right. Worship is reserved for God and God alone. And God says, I'm nobody's idol because I'm living, baby. I ain't got to be carved. You ain't got to make no pictures. As a matter of fact, one of my big tents said, make no graven images of me because I can move it just like that. Yeah. Ooh, come on now. Everybody else can celebrate and worship wood and metal, but I'm going to worship the true and living God. That's right. And he says, your beauty corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your own splendor. You better watch how you get that big head. Wow. People say, nice smile, Dr. V. He said, to God be the glory. Yes. <laughs> nice glasses, Dr. V. To God be the glory. <laughs> now, you better give it back to him. Because whatever he gave you, Sean and Emma, is a gift. Yes, it is. And you always make sure that you mention the gift giver yes. and not take credit for yourself. My God. Help us I cast here. you to the ground. I laid you before kings, he said, that they might gaze upon you. So this is even there. There's a translation. i got to move forward. But don't miss this point. That they might gaze upon you. So now it switches narrative because he's helping people understand that even Satan was cast down before kings so that they would learn their lesson. Wow. If Satan could get kicked out of heaven, then you can get kicked off that throne. Yes, yes, yes. Woo! Lucifer became so impressed with his own beauty, intelligence, and power and position that he began to desire for himself the honor and the glory that belonged to God. Can you believe that? Yes. Then he, along with other angels, he influenced, rebelled against God, and said these five things over in Isaiah 14. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. How do you think they got down here to torment you and me? Right? So they say over in Isaiah 14 and 12, he says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you got cut down to the ground, who you who weakened the nations. That's right. It goes on and it says, For you have said this in your heart. Oh, you think you got to say something in order to insult or make God mad? No, just think it, and I got you covered. Wow. God was like, I know y'all. Because mm -hmm. see, everybody else, you got fooled. Just because you are closed now. He says over in Proverbs, he says, it's better to keep your mouth shut than to remove all doubt and open it. <coughs> Take that proverb, nothing for the week, right? But then he says, but you said in your heart. Pop, he didn't even say it out loud, Chris. He said in your heart, you walk around here thinking you're somebody. Up in my kingdom. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. All right. You got kids talking about, I ain't going to do something in your house. Same got kicked out for less. Mm -hmm. Your kid up in there telling you, you ain't going to clean his room. You better straighten that out real quick in a hurry. You better bring some lightning to them. Pow! Oh, yeah. All the archangels. Pow! I'm doing this to make sure you don't go to hell. Hell no. Hell no. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation of the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the clouds, the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This is what he said in his heart walking around God's kingdom. Now, just point of reference really quickly. How many letters are in the word pride? Five. five. One, two, three, four, five. And what's the middle letter in the word? I. When you're dealing with an I problem, you got some pride going. Yes. I hope y'all picking all this up, right? It goes on to 15. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, which is another name for hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. Check this out, family. Satan showed us right here when a good heart goes bad. Yes, sir. My God. I just finished telling you, he was a cherub, he was the man, he made music when he walked, it was important in heaven, and now here we are, he got kicked out of heaven. Oh, Pride is the thing that got Satan kicked out. Pride is the thing that will keep you out. Wow. Pride is the thing that got Satan kicked out. Pride is the thing that will kick you out. Come on. And anytime we are activating and working and walking and taking our permissive free will that God gave us to be created like him in his image, anytime we take that free will and we sin against God, that's pride. Yes. Mm, wow. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to leave a piece of sin untouched according to the word. Come back next week. I'm going to lay them all out. Come on. Come on. Don't be in here ducking and tucking like maybe you don't see me. Don't worry about it. The Lord's going to name yours right down the list. And don't worry about it. All of them are sin. All of them. I ain't going to heighten one and, 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 and stand up on one and then this, that, and third. One is equally as bad as the other. It's all pride and it's all going to get you kicked out. Amen. It's all going to keep you out. Amen. Yeah. So this pride represents the actual beginning of sin in the universe. Right? So let's go on. Revelation chapter 12. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12 and 3 says it like this. Revelation 12 and 3. Now, I'm y'all are in Revelation. Yes. Because y'all got to understand, this thing, this whole topic, this conversation, this subject spans the Bible once Jesus came on the scene. It says over in Revelation, this is the revelation of Christ, by the way, something else appeared in the sky. 
It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and a crown on each of its seven heads, right? I know it sounds very poetic and kind of mystical, but that's the book of Revelation is why we don't teach from a whole lot, right? But there's some plain things now that you got some foundation. Here we go. With its tail, it dragged a third of the stars. By the way, let's go back. See, let me be honest. In Genesis, he's the man sharing with the snakeskin suit on. Yeah. Weaseling his way up to Eve. Talking about, hey, girl. You should not surely die. <laughs> Watch out for that snakeskin suit, ladies. <laughs> Talk about she looks shot. Baby, watch out. <laughs> but then by the time we make it over to the Gospel of John, he's the roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. Yeah. So he went from snake to roaring toothless lion. Yeah. But now we get all the way to the last book over in Revelations, and he is a fire-breathing dragon. Yeah. So what am I saying? You should stomp him out and chop off his head when he's a snake yeah. before he becomes a fire breathing dragon in your life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> With his tail, he dragged a third of the stars, angels, a.k.a. stars. He corrupted a third of God's angels. Don't think that you just don't get influenced by people, by influencers. Wow. Baby, I'm following such and such. You better be careful who you're following. If you ain't telling me you're following Jesus, put that phone down. I don't even care about it. As a matter of fact, is that person that you're saying that you're following, are they following Jesus? Right. All right. I don't care about the rest of it. I don't care about the account. I don't care about none of that. Because all of this is going to die and go away. Yes. But what's going to make sure that we get into eternity, right? Yes. With his tail, it dragged a third of the stars from the sky. These are angels we're talking about. They're where we're trying to go. And they fell. Yes. They got moved by, by this guy, by, by Satan himself. From the sky and threw them down to the earth. A war broke out in heaven. Come on, y'all. This is where Lamar and Jeff come in. War fights. Where's a baby with curly hair, a fat baby with wings going to fight like this? <laughs> Can't happen. European brothers got it wrong, right? <laughs> Jeff and Lamar broke out in a fight with angels. We're fighting against the dragon and his angels. Ching, ching, ching. I think Game of Thrones is original. They stole it from the Bible. But the dragon lost the battle. Amen. It's okay to cheer right there. That's a good place to say hallelujah. That's a good place to say hallelujah. And it's his angels were forced out in their places in heaven. Revelation 12 and 9 jumped down in the text and it says, And were thrown down to the earth. Yes, that old snake and his angels were thrown out of heaven. Hold on, he went back to snake. Why? Because he wanted you to identify him in Genesis. Yes. He went from dragon and got demoted back down to snake. Come on, somebody. This is all happening. Before God turns on the lights down here. Right. Mm. Before he says, and let there be light. Mm. All of this transpired. Yes. yes, that old snake and his angels were thrown out of heaven. That snake who fools everyone on earth is known as the devil and as Satan. Mm. Come on, somebody say hell no. Hell. hell no. That's what I'm talking about. We don't want it. Hell no. Luke 10 and 18 says like this. Yes, he told them, and this is Jesus telling us, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Just like that. Pow! Some of our fall, we hit every rung on the left. Right? We make it back to page six, a 15-minute news cycle. Right? Y'all, I was going to name drop somebody probably. And listen, some people are dealing with it, right? But that's why Satan takes you up to a high place. That better be Jesus calling. Right? That's why Satan <laughs> takes you up to a high place so that he can drop you from there. All right. Again. If Satan was bold enough to do it to Jesus, then why won't he do it to you? Wow. The very first thing Jesus does after he pops out of the, the Jordan Terror, after he gets baptized by his cousin John the Baptist, is go out into the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights. At the peak of it, he's the most hungriest, right? Uh, we get we miss lunch and we hang. We, we miss lunch and we're not even holy no more. But Jesus is out there 40 days and 40 nights to prove his ministry and get ready for you and for me to get ready for what he's going to do on Calvary. Make sure you're here to hear about it on the 31st of March. Thing, right? But he's getting ready to be out there in the wilderness, and Satan comes to him and he says, he makes him three bargains. And one of those three bargains, he says, he took him up to the pinnacle of the high place and showed him all of the earth, which he's ruler over. That's right. He runs earth, but God runs heaven. Yes. So you tell me, is this dream that we're living in here what you want to commit to? What you want to have conviction about? What you want to follow in? Or do you want to go to where our home is? Because here, what I'm saying from my heart, Heaven is my home. Yes. I'm a spiritual being passing through and having a fleshly encounter right now. Don't look at this, this broken, ailing man that stands before you because one day, 
I'm going to be transformed and transfigured into his glorious and marvelous life. Hallelujah. I'm going to take the crown that he gave me as a king's kid and I'm going to set it back down at his feet. But what about you? What about you? And this is why God gives us a word like this so we can make up a decision. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like a lightning bolt. And it goes on. I lost my clicker, JJ. So it goes on. Here we go. We'll figure it out. She's going to figure it out. But let's keep going, right? So it says, let's talk about what is hell. Let's talk about what is hell. What is hell? Because that's what we came to talk about, right? Are y'all okay? Yes, sir. All right. Well, good. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody's going to say, hell, I ain't all right. Don't do that. That's, that's the wrong place for that. <laughs> so let's talk about what is hell. Hell is also known as by different names. Hell, Hades, Sheol, place of death, essentially, right? It's known as that. It's also known, Jesus uses a valley called Gehana, which is hell on earth. Why is it known as hell on earth? Because it's a valley that's just south of Jerusalem. What happens in this valley, y'all? Anybody ever been out to the dump? Mm -hmm. Right? Anybody ever actually been into the dump? They're so nice now, you just dump your stuff in the dump, so they take it up for you, right? But old places like California, they're like, no, come into the dump, right? Anybody ever been in the dump? It's horrible. It's detestable. It's miserable. Matter of fact, we went to Africa, we went to Kenya, and we saw people living in the dump. Yes. Living in the dump. And so you can imagine how hard that is on the senses as you go in to spread the gospel. But this is a valley also known as Gehenna, hell on earth, which uses a public dump where garbage, dead animals, corpses of criminals, and all manner of uncleanness constantly burned in this valley. Yes. Sounds like hell on earth, right? Yes, sir. Some of us use that expletive. We say, I have hell on earth in my life. So Jesus says, I don't want y'all to be forgotten about. I know what you're talking about. Also, it's also known as outer darkness over in Matthew 8 and 12. Jesus mentioned fire in Revelation to hell as at least 20 times. He says there's fire there. Burn. Right? He says, listen, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth there. What part about that sounds good? That is not, that is not a place I want to go. And I should be doing everything in my capable free will power to make sure that I don't go there. All right. All right. Now, am I saying that you need to go to theology school and go and get a doctorate in this? And I'm not saying that. I'm just saying open this. Uh, I don't know, maybe once a day since it's your daily bread instead of treating it like birthday cake. Mm -hmm. Wow. Stop running to this altar every single week. And it's okay to come. It's okay to come just give praise. Why I got to come because I'm broken all the time. Wow. When's the last time we just came just to say, God, you just good. Yes. You're just good. I'm not even coming with my problems. I'm not coming with my burdens. I'm not coming with my issues. God, you just good. You just plain old good. You're so awesome. You're so powerful. You're so amazing to me, God. I do not deserve your grace. When's the last time we just did that? Just just that. Just that. Or do we say, hold on, hold on, God, hold on. I got this last, this last thing on my list. Hold on, God, hold on, hold on. Don't hang up. Don't hang up yet, God. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. Jesus. Jesus. He's our sugar daddy. It's also known as the lake of fire, the final destination of damnation. I cannot get into it today as much as I want to, but check this out. Hell is not the final stop off. That's right. And by the way, hell, even though uh, there's, there's artists and painters, especially our European brothers and sisters, they've depicted this guy with horns and a red tail and a pitchfork, and he's running around down there in hell and his, his capital headquarters office. He's not there yet. No. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's here amongst us. Yes. Matter of fact, oh, touch the chair next to you. You might be in the chair next to you. <laughs> No, he's not in the assembly of the saints. Yes, he is. John 10 and 10. He's roaming about like a royal lion looking for who's in his sleeping, who he can devour. In the very first chapter of Job, oh, I'm doing so much today. I hope y'all all right. Y'all all right? In the very first chapter of Job, he comes skipping in like Kyle was to the court of the Lord. So I'm like, hey, Satan. Where you been at? He says, you're going to and fro in the earth, Lord. What up, Jesus? Right? If he can walk into the assembly of God and the host of his angels, surely he can be in God's house. And if he can be in God's house, then it would stand a reason that he might be in your house. Jesus. Oh, my God. Y'all can't take no. Y'all can't take no. Y'all can't. That's all right. That's all right. What the Bible does make clear is that hell is real, eternal, and to be avoided at all costs. At all costs. At all costs. So who is, it, who is hell intended for? The devil and the angels. Thank you, man. Gold star. The Help devil us, and his angels. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor with all sincerity and all seriousness. Snap off your glasses. Yes, 
Say it. Hell, hell is not for me. It's not for you. It's not for you. If there is no good news report today, that should be it. That is not for you. Say it's not for me. It's not for it's me. It's not. It's never been intended for you. It wasn't made for you. It was made for him and, those, and that third of angels that he took out of heaven with him. So this is why we can confidently and boldly proclaim before the throne of mercy and grace, hell no, I won't go. I won't go. That's the conviction that we have to have. It was created for him and his angels. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. That's right. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. So, again, why does hell exist? Oh, let's get out of here. To justly punish. Matter of fact, let me get some keys. Let me get some music, brother, before we get out of here. Right? So, just to, it, it's, it's a place to justly punish those who rebel against the Lord. Because, see, a lot of us might say, well, why did God even create it? To have a place to justly punish people. That's not, that's not right, though. It's, it's, not, it's not fair. Right? Let me help you to understand, because as we go into this series and we start talking about sin and we start enveloping and developing your understanding of the thing that separates you from God sticks a chasm between you and Jesus Christ and it takes away from the grace that he brought and why God sent his son right I want you to understand it's not about fairness if we dealt with fairness and God on a fair scale my God we would get more of what we get in the world fair is a man's thought process it's a place of neutrality God deals in black and white not a shade of gray he's a just God He's a righteous God. On, this is why I can tell you that you're not right. Come on. You're not right. Dot, dot, dot by yourself. Come on. The only way that you're made right is with Christ in your life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember when your parents used to say to you, have you lost your right mind? Obviously you have because you don't have Christ right now. We don't have our right mind and we are not right. We are very left without Jesus Christ. And so therefore if we're not right then we can't be righteous. Wow. If you're not right, then you can't be righteous. To so justly punish those who rebel against the Lord through disobedience or free will election of sin instead of righteousness. My God, free will. That's what hell is for. My God. So, somebody might be thinking, man, Hitler and Stalin and uh, Dave Koresh and, and, and John Dahmer and all those cats, they definitely going to be in hell. Okay, there's a story in Pericope about three surprises when you get to heaven. I want to tell them a different one about three surprises when you get to heaven. Hell, somebody say hell no. Hell no. It was like, <laughs> I don't even want to hear that story, Pastor. It sounds funny, I don't even want to hear it, right? But how about this? How about the bus driver? How about the third grade teacher? How about the person that dies and they were separated from God through disobedience and free will election, election of sin? They're going to go to the same hell. They're going to go to the same hell. I said God is not about fair. He's just. Meaning that it don't matter. Up, down, in or out, left or right. You're going to go if you're not following his book and his word, which is his son, Jesus Christ. Amen? It was originally intended for demonic spiritual beings, not for people. Not for people. That's right. Come on, fam. We're getting ready to get out of here. Check this out. It was originally intended for demonic spirits, not for people. To experience burning to experience darkness, to experience intense grief, and to experience horror. This is all the different addresses in which you can find it. Hell, in its broadest sense, family, is a place of conscious torment after death. Wow. Meaning that you just don't go down there and get consumed, Jeff. You alive and burn. Alive. We don't. You're going to live for eternity. Somewhere. You have a choice. Today. Today. Where is that somewhere going to be? I don't care what Buddha says. I don't care what Mormons say. I don't care what Catholics say. I don't care what the, the, the spiritual tree hugger people say. You're not going to come back as a daisy or flower. You're not. That's not what the creator of the universe said. Right? You're not coming back as somebody else. Right? You're going to live for eternity someplace else. Other than here. Is it going to be down there or is it going to be up there? Yes. Moses said, I'm getting, I'm, it's, it's going to be next week, but Moses said over in Deuteronomy, he says, I compel you, I pray right now, I exhort you, encourage you, I, I'm, I'm coming to you right now. He says, choose life. He says, today you got to choose life or death, but I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you to choose life today. What will keep us out of hell? Salvation. 
through grace received through faith in Christ alone. Come on, family, we got to go. Somebody say one more time for me before we go. Say hell no. Hell no. Now that we know a little bit more about how he got down there. Now that we know a little bit of, of reason why I got devised, why I got built, why I got created it, right? There's got to be a reason for it. And, 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 and it's not for you. Isn't that good news? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I'm still sharing the gospel with you today. The good news is that God sent his son so we wouldn't go. Yeah. Without Jesus, there's no choice. We're going without him. And so today... Thank you for joining and participating in our Agape Church Sunday Morning Expectation Service virtually. We're so blessed that you chose to tune in and spend a part of your Sunday morning with Christ Jesus and His children here at Agape. We pray and believe with expectation that you received a word from God for your life today with revelation unto your transformation. If today's word inspired you in a special way, we would love to hear from you. You can connect and reach us by phone or email. Text need prayer, new member, one info, two, 443-640-7491. You can also reach us via email, prayer, member, or info at lovelikehim.today. We look forward to connecting with you real soon. God bless you and have a great Sunday. And remember always to love like him.